Weld throat is the distance between the root of the weld, where the two parent metals meet, to the face of the weld. So in this example, I got quarter inch plate to quarter inch plate. I roughly want a quarter inch throat, and I achieve that by making quarter inch legs. That's something that I can measure. We just measure from the root out to the edge and the root out to the edge. And as long as the profile of the bead is flat, slightly convex, I know I'm gonna have that quarter inch throat. Now, what would happen if I over welded this and I've got that same quarter inch throat scenario or a meeting on quarter inch throat there, but I have three quarters of an inch. Well, the weld itself is gonna be fine. In fact, you're just gonna make a really, really nice, big old strong weld, but we've got way too much heat going into that plate. Welding always causes distortion. So if we add too much throat into our weld or too much weld metal, now the parent metal is gonna be warped up. Worse still, if I put too much heat into a piece of plate, it can take the a toll on the strength of the heat affected zone or basically the material in between the weld and the parent material. We're gonna take a look at these two joint designs. We're gonna weld these out. We're gonna weld a uh, piece that has insufficient throat and then we're gonna put a giant weld in here so you can see the difference between the two. We're also gonna do this joint design and that would be like an outside square edged groove weld where we got two pieces of angle butted up against itself and then we're gonna make the weld in right here. And we're gonna talk about how if we ground that down, we're taking away throat strength and how easy it would be to pull these materials apart if we take away the throat on that particular weld design. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna use the TIG process for this so I can really control how much filler metal goes in between these two pieces. Uh, this is quarter inch plate to quarter inch plate, so we really need that quarter inch weld. Well, I'm gonna use the TIG process and we're gonna make a very, very shallow throated weld and then we're gonna destructively test it, see how strong it is. This is the inside corner joint on quarter inch plate, but without enough throat. The legs of this weld are about an eighth of an inch, but the throat, I can only calculate here without doing a cross section cut, it's probably only about a 32nd of an inch. It's really, really thin. Now, something to note on this weld, it's hard to see in the camera, but there is a hairline crack down the face of the weld, or right in the middle of the weld. And this is really common with welds that don't have enough throat. They don't have enough strength to resist cracking when the metal starts pulling and warping around. Welding always causes distortion, it always causes the metals to move around. And in this case, the material moved and that caused it to centerline crack. All right, got a little bit of a lever on my quarter inch plate here and I'm just gonna go ahead and gently pull this down. There it is, we've got a center line crack right down the face of the weld and that was not hard to break at all, maybe a couple pounds of force. This really shows the power of the throat of the weld. If I had sufficient throat, there is no way that I could do that by hand. Now, of course, this is an extreme example. We did a, an autogenous TIG weld, so we added no filler metal here, but I really wanted to show the power of the, the a proper throat in your weld. Here's that seam weld, that inside corner joint. This time, I added some filler metal. And as you can see here on our fillet weld gauge is that we're right at that quarter inch leg size, but it's still a little bit concaved, but that's okay. I'm really looking for about a 3 16 inch throat. The big benefit of adding filler metal and adding more throat in this inside corner is that with filler metal, I'm gonna add strength roughly double the strength of the parent material that it's on, about 70,000 tensile here. So there's just no way I could take that lever and just pull this weld apart. But these little gauge sets right here can help you determine if your weld has sufficient leg size and throat size. So we, again, we're a little shy here. I could just add another pass, uh, but in my case, I know for the scope of work or what I'm doing with this weld, it's gonna be plenty of strong. Let's transition into making a weld that's too big. 
All right, here's that inside corner joint with just way, way, way too much throat. Yeah, this is a very strong weld. It's massive, but the big problem is, is we put so much heat into our quarter inch plate, we have a lot of warpage. So when we're trying to put this up against another part or it needs to fit into a uh, space for the piece that we're building, it's not gonna fit up very well because it has so much warpage. The other problem that happens when we put too much weld in is that in the heat affected zone or the space between the weld and the parent material, we get large grain growth. So the grains of the steel get very large and it's easy for them to slip or dislocate against the weld or the parent material that's not affected, causing a weak point right here in the toe. Here's that outside corner joint, the square edged outside corner joint. And where I see a lot of problems with this weld is that the welder will make a nice weld all the way across. It'll have sufficient throat, so it'll be coming off of this plate about an eighth of an inch. So we gotta remember that that plus the penetration that the, the arc gets into the parent material, that gives us our throat. We're looking again for about a 3 16 inch throat here. But what will happen is then the welder will take a flap disc and they'll grind all of that reinforcement down to try to blend in the corner. It is okay to do that, but not okay to take too much out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a weld here and we're gonna take too much out and we're gonna see how strong it is. Now, what I did here was I took a flap disc and I blended all that weld in the side. It looks really cool. It looks like the edge was just formed that way, but I'm here to tell you I've probably taken out almost all the strength. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip this over and then we're gonna put a wedge on the backside here and go ahead and drive a hammer in onto the backside and see where the failure occurs in the weld. Here's the result of a couple smacks with that wedge. You can see how much we've pulled the two pieces of material out, and that's not a, a lot of force. I've got a wedge and about a two pound sledgehammer, really not a lot, but what we wanna see here is this little crease coming down the middle of our weld. This is indicating that we're having yielding going on right at the center of the weld, not what would happen if we would have left the throat on and hadn't ground the weld down. This is an indicating that it's already starting to fail. And that's not a lot of force. We would take a lot more force if we had left that throat on there. We're gonna continue prying on it, but this time what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna hit it with a hammer anymore. I'm just gonna weld on a lever to the piece and then we're just gonna pull it with body weight and see if we can get this thing to snap. Okay, welded my little extension on here and now just leaning on this, we're gonna see if we can get it to break the whole way. Here we go, and nothing. Like nothing, just came right off. Let's take a look at this throat. Here's a cross section of that outside corner joint, and you can see here that little part right there, that was the weld. I've got a 1 16th inch rod here, so you can see that the depth of penetration was about a 16th, and that's just not enough and that well broke really easily as you saw. Now, if I wanted to do this properly and I wanted to blend the outside with a grinding disc, what you need to do is you need to bevel the parent material before you start welding. Beveling means you're cutting into the parent material at an angle so you can mechanically get that depth of penetration, then you fill it up with the weld, and then you can grind down the outside but still maintain that proper throat. Thank you for watching, really appreciate it. Hope you learned something today. If you're interested in training with General Air, check out the link in the description below.